I don't know about you, but when I start a new project card, the first thing I do is make a list of all the modifications I want to do. And one thing I had on the top of the list for the Honda Beat is making a custom wide body kit. I got a big roll of carbon fiber and all the other materials, watched a ton of YouTube videos, and even made a test fender for my one wheel. The vision was so clear in my head, and then it sat on the back burner for years. I'm not sure what it was, perhaps just too intimidated to start. But recently, I was asked to test out a 3D scanner, and it became my motivation to dust off the beat and start ticking things off the list again. I made a full video about 3D scanning the beat where I went in depth on how I got this 3D model that I could use to design the overfenders. A frequent question I get asked is, what 3D modeling software to use for designing car parts? And my answer is, try them all and choose whatever you like best. I use Autodesk Fusion because that's what I like and it's free. I have the full version because I'm part of the Fusion Creators program, but the free version can do all of this. Since fenders are relatively organic in shape with compound curves, I don't use traditional solid modeling like you would designing a bracket or a cup holder for example. Instead, I think it's better to use T-splines that you can access via the forms tool. This is more like 3D sculpting and gives you more dynamic degrees of freedom that you can tweak to make the shapes you want. I usually start with the cylinder position to follow the curve of the wheel arch. Then I start drawing faces on the large parts of the panel, splitting them up where I think the transitions will be. There are a few rules when using T-splines like avoiding star points and T-points wherever possible. And you won't be able to avoid them completely, but just try to minimize them as much as possible because you'll have issues turning it into a solid body. If you're just getting started and want to make things like this, Horsepower Academy has a 3D modeling in CAD for motorsports course that teaches you all the fundamentals and has working examples so you can confidently design parts yourself. And if you use the code AmyMade, you'll get $50 off and the channel also gets hooked up. Now this is the finished overfender designs. The look I'm going for is an OEM plus vibe with an additional 30 millimeters of clearance. These are going to be 3D printed using ASA filament on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And since the print bed is only 250 millimeters cubed, I need to slice the model into smaller pieces. To do this in Fusion, I just create a new sketch. Then I draw a line a little longer and another line a little taller than the fender then do a rectangular pattern with about 220 millimeter spacing. So it creates this grid that I could use to split the bodies using the split command. Then I can send them straight to the slicing software. Alternatively, you can import the entire Fender STL into Bamboo Studio and use the slicing feature. The plus side doing it this way is that you can add pins to help with alignment. For these fenders, I made them 3mm thick and printing them with three walls on a 0.4mm nozzle so the fender doesn't feel too bulky while having enough strength. Now that I have all the pieces printed, I'm going to attach them all together using a soldering iron and melting the back seam, then reinforcing the front with super glue. Luckily, the bead is pretty small, so attaching all the pieces together for all four fenders took less than 30 minutes. I asked our followers on Instagram if I should skin the fenders or make a mold, and most people voted on skinning. So I just want to preface all this work by stating that this is the first set of fenders I've ever made, and most likely there's going to be a Rev 2 sometime in the future, because these are not going to be perfect. Once all the pieces were joined, I sanded both sides with 80 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out and also key the surface so the epoxy can have a good mechanical bond. I'm using Total Boat's 2 to 1 epoxy with slow hardener, which I got about 4 years ago when I first thought about doing this project. And besides the hardener turning yellow, it's still good to use, so shout out to Total Boat. I ran out of black ASA printing the fenders, so to cover up some of the white pieces, I added black pigment to the epoxy, and I quickly realized that I should have added way more pigment. But we're not striving for perfection here, so this is going to be good enough.
I let this code dry for about one and a half hours until it got tacky but didn't transfer to my finger. Then with Laura's help, we laid the carbon fiber cloth gently on top and smoothed it out making sure to get all the edges. After cutting off the excess cloth, I put a heavy wet coat of epoxy on top and let it cure overnight. The next day, I sanded from 80 grit to 120, then finished off with 220 making sure to have a smooth surface. I also cleaned and sanded the edges and then wiped everything off with some isopropyl alcohol and brushed on a thin layer of epoxy. I did three coats total, waiting about one and a half hours between coats. Then I let the whole thing cure overnight. Finally, I wet sanded up to 600 grit and sprayed three coats of 1K clear for some UV protection, and this is how it came out. The fenders are just mocked up for now because I need to remove some material from the body panels and I think that's probably better for another video. And if you guys are interested in seeing that, comment below. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the fenders came out. Going through the process made me realize that I don't love doing body work at all. And it's nowhere near perfect, but I'm better than I was yesterday and I think that's pretty cool. As always, thanks for watching.